Hi, I'm Catherine Justice and I'm an integrative physical therapist and I'm going to guide you through some mindful movement and what that means is that we're going to move our bodies in a way that feels authentic to us. So know that everything that we're going to do in this session today is customizable. If I'm kind of mentioning, oh, now we could come onto our backs and do some stuff and you feel like, no, I would rather be standing, feel free to do the movements in standing or vice versa. If we're standing, you can be sitting, um, just finding the position that makes your body the most comfortable and take, making choices around the movement that make you feel um, powerful and make you feel good and um, following those instincts. And it might be sometimes the movement we're doing doesn't feel great in your body. Things could feel stiff or they could feel sore or even, you know, our body stores emotion in our body. And sometimes those emotions can come up. And while that might not be comfortable, it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes, you know, stiff areas of the body, they, the only way they get unstiff is by moving them. And sometimes emotions that are trapped in our body, the only way they get free is by letting them out. So, um, so just know that the feelings that we do or that you encounter during this practice may be pleasant and they may not, and that that's all okay. The whole gamut of your experience is all um, part of this process and part of this journey. So to start, you can start in whatever position makes you most comfortable, whether it's lying down, sitting, standing, and you're just gonna kind of explore for yourself what kind of movements would feel good for your body. So it might be some gentle stretching movements. It might be some swaying side to side. It might be shaking, shaking out some energy from the hands and the feet or circling through wrists or ankles, just kind of exploring whatever movement feels like it's what your body wants. And as you do these little kind of organic movements, you might also start to notice what the floor or the ground feels like under you. So if you're on a chair or you're on the floor, Maybe you just start to notice what it feels like under your hands or under your hips, your legs, just getting that support from the floor. And that could eventually transition into coming onto hands or knees, or you can stay in sitting for this as well. And as you come onto hands and knees, if that's your choice, you could spread your fingers. If your knees are sensitive, you could always have a blanket fold it under your knees and that will give you some cushion and support and from this position we can explore maybe exhaling and rounding the back letting the head drop down just seeing what that feels like or inhaling for a gentle arch of the back and just going into the movements as far as your body wants to so maybe it wants to do them really small just teeny tiny movements Maybe it wants to make it really big or somewhere in between. And these can be great in hands and knees, but they can also work well if you're sitting in a chair, just rounding through the back and arching from a seated position. And it's just exploring that movement of your spine, of your back, And you could stay with this for as long as you want. If you find a spot that feels good, you could even choose to pause for a breath or two in one specific spot. But if you'd like to try something different, you could walk your hands over to the right and then feel your hips pull back towards the left. Your head can drop down and maybe it touches the floor, maybe it doesn't, that's fine. If you're doing this in a chair, you can just reach your arms over to one side. It's just about opening and feeling that sensation in through the ribs, the hips, the shoulder. And you could explore the other side if you wanted, walking the hands to the left, hips to the right. Maybe noticing how it's different from one side to the other. It often does feel really different. And 
And then as you come back towards center, if you'd like, you could separate your knees just a comfortable distance apart. Let your hips drop towards your heels and let your body rest down. And as it rests down, you could bring your hands under your head or some people like to stack fists. Or if it's comfortable for the head to touch the floor, you could bring it all the way down. And from here, maybe taking some gentle side to side motion if that feels good, or you could just hang out in stillness. And feel free to stay for as long as you want. And when you feel ready to rise back up, you could come back up and maybe exploring from here some movement in the legs. So you could take your right toes under and slide them back into a little calf stretch. And if you're in sitting, you can just reach your leg forward and kind of stretch through your calf that way. And the foot could sway side to side if that feels good. And then if you'd like, you could explore the other side, the left foot reaching back. Maybe you wanna just kind of push straight and feel that calf stretch, or maybe you wanna wave side to side. If being on hands and knees doesn't feel good for your wrists, another option is to come down onto your elbows. And releasing down. And then if you'd like, you could step the right foot forward and kind of come into this little bit of a lunge shape. And in the lunge, if you want, your arms can be kind of on either side of the foot or they could be on the inside. And just feeling a gentle sway. Maybe you want to kind of breathe with this movement. Think inhale as you come forward and exhale as you drop back or vice versa. And again, these movements, if you're doing them, they could be really small or they can be really big. And if you'd like, this could even come into a twist. So you could have your left fist on the ground and the right hand could come to your hip for a little bit of a twist or even reaching the right arm up to the sky. If the right arm is reaching up, you could always add in some movement with just some gentle wrist circles. And then perhaps this even takes you all the way up into a lunge. And from here, maybe again, you just take that pulsing movement coming forward on the inhale and soften back on the exhale or vice versa. And you could stay with this or another option would be to interlace your hands behind your head. And maybe with your thumbs, you could even give your neck just like a little gentle massage. So just rubbing your thumbs kind of up and down the neck. Or maybe you just want to lean your head back into your hands and let your neck soften. And you could stay with that pulsing in the hips or you could just sink forward through the hips and just feel that opening or that sensation up through the front of the left side of the body. And as you feel ready, you could slowly switch for the other side. So the hands could come to the ground as you step back and the left foot could step forward. And again, the hands can kind of frame the foot or they can both be on the inside as we start with just those gentle pulses through the hips. And you could stay here if you wanted, or you could bring it into a twist. So now it would be the right fist on the earth. Left hand could be on the hip, or it can reach up to the sky. And from here, if you want to add in that little gentle circling for the wrist, feel free. And 
And then if you'd like, you could bring your hands up to your front thigh to come all the way up into that sort of more upright lunge. And then again, you could come back into that pulsing, inhaling forward, exhaling back, or vice versa. Or if you want, you could even take your hands behind your head, maybe a little neck massage, or maybe you just let your neck soften and let your head drop back into your hands. You could keep the pulse going, or you could just find stillness. And as you're ready, you could release the hands and step it back once again into that child's form, letting your knees be as wide apart as is comfortable. Hips drop back towards your heels. They may or may not touch. It's just fine either way and dropping the head down. You could drop it again onto your hands or fists. Another option is to grab one of these bolsters and let your forehead rest on a bolster. That can feel really nice. Whatever version you're taking, if you want motion added to it, you could just gently sway side to side. And then from here, if you'd like, you can come all the way forward onto your belly, making your way down. If you are pregnant, you do not want to be on your belly, most likely, if you're in your second or third trimester. So if that's the case with you, just come to seated, and I'll show you some options for these practices in seated. But if you're comfortable coming down onto your belly, you can come all the way down. You'll bring your hands under your shoulders, Roll the shoulders away from your ears and reach through your toes like your body is going to reach long. And then maybe getting the sense of pulling with the hands as if you could pull your heart forward. So this is called cobra pose. If you're not comfortable on your belly or your second or third trimester pregnant, you can do this by just bringing your hands in front of your shoulders and sitting and get that feeling of kind of broadening across the chest and pulling down through the shoulders. Just getting that really nice opening for the top of the body for the heart. So whatever variation you're taking, whether it's sitting or on your belly, feeling that opening. And then when you're ready to release, you can just let your hands come under your forehead and let everything go gooey. And if you're in seated, you can just let your body relax into whatever comfortable, floppy seated position you wanna practice from, you wanna rest in. If you're on your belly and you wanna feel your hips swaying side to side, that can be a great way of loosening the back. And then we'll take that cobra form twice more. So again, in seated, you just bring your hands in front of your shoulders. And um, on your belly, you bring your hands under your shoulders, roll the shoulders away from your ears. If you're on your belly, you can reach long through your toes and then lengthening through the heart. Maybe breathing here. I said maybe breathing. You're, you're gonna wanna breathe. <laughs> Breathing's not optional. That's gotta happen. And as you feel like your body needs a break, you take it and just let everything relax. Maybe sway side to side if that feels good. And then if you'd like, we'll take one more round. So reaching through the toes, hands come under the shoulders or if you're sitting there in front of the shoulders, Roll the shoulders away from the ears, reach through the heart. Relax the face, the jaw, the throat. If you can, let those areas be soft. And then this time to release, you could come first up onto your elbows and then lift up onto your knees to ease your way back into child's form. And it's normal for after doing those back bends for our backs to feel a little tight. So as you come into child's pose, maybe you're feeling some of that tightness in the back and that's okay. 
You can add in a little sway if that feels good. And then whenever you feel ready, you could slowly make your way up and you could stay and seated if you're sitting or if you'd like to, you could make your way all the way up to standing. And one way to get there would be to do it kind of through a lunge to step one foot forward and come on up to stand. Feel free to use a piece of furniture to help you out if you want it. And if there's another way you like to come up to stand, feel free to do that. And then as you find your comfortable standing position, whatever it is, just starting to bring your awareness to your feet on the floor. And so you could do a little bit of rocking through the feet if that feels like it's helpful to get that awareness. And you could rock forward and back or you could see what it would feel like to rock side to side. Just noticing the sensation of the feet kind of rolling on the ground. Could even imagine as if your feet were cars, like where the tires would be, where the four corners of the feet would be. And if you can think of finding all four tires, so front and back, inner, outer, rooting through the feet. From here, maybe a little shake of the knees to just release some energy and you can let that come into the hands too. Just some gentle shaking. It could even go into the arms or the shoulders. Just letting the body release some tension through shaking. We can even wiggle a leg or the other leg. And then from here, if you want to go further with that sort of type of motion, you could let your feet come wide and just take some gentle sort of swinging motion for the arms. And if you notice in the feet, I'm kind of making this movement big by pivoting through the feet. You could do that or you could keep it small and just let it be more for the shoulders, the upper back. You just want to make sure that your knees don't hurt if you do it this way. It's a little bit safer for the knees to let the heels lift. But figuring out what works for you because every body is different. The more you can let the arms be just loosey-goosey, the more that's going to release tension and pain from the upper back, from the shoulders, the neck. And then gradually letting these movements get smaller and smaller until you come back to midline, back to the feet under the hips. If you'd like, you could bring your hands to your heart and you could let this next um, offering be just movement for the sake of movement if you just want to move your body. Or another option would be to think about this movement as like a physical expression of the circle of security, of that idea of sort of releasing control and allowing freedom for the child and then also nurturing and welcoming the child back into your arms. So if you'd like to, you could imbue the movement with that idea or you could just do the movement and not worry about what it means or what, what it's imbued with. At your own pace, as you inhale, you can circle the arms and think of letting go. And exhale, hands come back to the heart, perhaps welcoming back in. So at your own pace, following through that just gentle arm circle, the movement might be really big. That might feel good. The movement could be quite small, just in front of your chest. That might feel better. So just deciding how big you want the movement to be, and what you want it to look like. But more about than look, what you want it to feel like from the inside of the body, sensing what kind of movement is gonna be most nurturing for you, right here, right now. And you could stay with this as long as you want it. If you want to try something else, another option would be to step the right foot forward, left foot back, 
And then the right knee is going to bend until you can just see the big toe to the inside of the knee. And then you know your knee is in a really strong position. And you want the feet, the distance apart, to be whatever distance apart makes you feel strong, makes you feel kind of powerful and supported. That's going to be the right distance. So it doesn't have to be too big. It doesn't have to be too small. Just figure out what works for you. And you could just, if you want it, just have your hands on your hips and just hang out here in this really kind of strong, grounded position. Or if you'd like more movement added to it, you could bring the hands to the heart. And it would be an option to straighten through the front leg and let the arms go wide. And you could exhale, bend through the knee and let the hands come back together. And as we explore this movement, maybe you just do the arms. So maybe you just let the knee stay bent or stay straight and just move through the arms. Or another option would be maybe you just keep your hands at your heart and you just do the movement through the leg, inhaling to straighten, exhaling to bend. Or you could explore doing them both. Maybe even feeling on the inhale when the hands go wide, that's sort of drawing in through the shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, releasing, softening through that tension. It's so common for tension and stress to really congregate in that between the shoulder blades, upper mid back area into the neck and the shoulders. So sometimes if we think of moving into the tension is a great way to then release it, to let go, to let that tension melt away. So doing whatever kind of movement feels like it's helping your body feel better. And you could stay with this or another option would be to bend through the knee, interlace the hands and reach up overhead. Maybe feeling again those four corners of your feet, feeling that sense of rooting and grounding into the earth. Perhaps softening at the face, the jaw, the temples. And you could stay here or you could bring your hands behind your back to interlace and feel the opening in a slightly different way across the chest, across the heart. And if your body's like, I still want movement, you can just pulse through the knee in here. That works well. And as you're ready, you could release the hands back to the hips and we can switch sides. So you'd step left foot forward, right foot back. And again, it might be different from one side to the other and that's okay. So you just find whatever stance makes you feel strong. The front knee can bend until you can just see the big toe. And again, you can hang out here the whole time. This is an amazing, really just empowering, strong stance. You could stay or you could see what it would feel like to bring the hands to the heart. And if you wanted that movement option, you could inhale to straighten and open, exhale to bend, bringing the hands back together. Exploring the movement on this side of the body. And again, it's always an option to just do the movement through the leg if you prefer, or just do it through the arms. or keep exploring both together. And again, maybe as you inhale, feeling that sort of drawing in sensation to the shoulder blades, like they could make like a V shape behind your back, like the shoulder blades, the bottom tips will come towards each other. And as you exhale, the shoulder blades soften apart. And you could stay with this for as long as your body wants to explore it. Or if you'd like, you could interlace and stretch up from here. And again, you can keep the knee bent or you can do the pulsing. Maybe coming back to those four corners of your feet, feeling that rooting and grounding into the earth. And you could stay or you could interlace the hands behind the back from here. Feeling that different opening across the chest and the heart.
And as you feel ready, you could release the arms, stepping forward, and we'll do one more standing sequence. So optional to step your left foot back, only this time you're gonna bring the feet so that they line up a little more, so that the front heel kind of lines up with the back arch. Sometimes I talk about this as like a hallway position, like you could do it down a narrow hallway. And then you're still gonna bend your knee until you can just see the big toe. But then from here, the arms get to float forward and back. And this is an awesome place to hang out. You could hang out here, or again, you could get that grounding through hands on the hips, or you could bring hands to the heart. So you can really decide where your arms feel like they wanna hang out. And if you want movement, we could add movement into here too. So you could inhale and straighten. The left arm could drop down, the right arm can drop up, maybe feeling some sensation or some opening through that right side. And then you could exhale sort of back to the arms parallel, or you could actually keep it going if you wanted to and reach up through the left arm. So if you'd like to add movement, straightening and opening, exhaling and reaching. And again, you could do this keeping the leg bent the whole time and just working through the arms. Or you could do this with the arms holding steady and just pulsing through the leg. Or you could keep both going together. And again, you could stop the movement when the arms are parallel or you could keep it going. And for this one, if you want to switch sides, you could do so by just stepping the feet, or this one works pretty well with just a pivot. If you want to just pivot the feet to come into that sort of heel to arch position on the other side with the left leg forward. And then again, you can bend the knee until you can just see the big toe. And then the arms can float. And you could hang out here, or here, or hands at the heart. Or if you'd like, you could let there be movement. Let there be movement. You could inhale, straighten and reach. Exhale, either stopping it parallel or taking it a little further if you want. And if again, if the breath gets reversed where you feel like you're breathing wrong, there is no way to breathe wrong. As long as you're breathing, you're doing it right. So and let go of the need to be perfect at everything, or even the need to let there be a perfect for anything. There's no perfect with this. It's just about sensing in your body what movement would feel therapeutic. Or even if you don't know what movement will feel therapeutic, just trying the movement and seeing how you feel. And again, this can be done with just the arms or with just the legs or with both. And when you feel ready to be done, you could step your feet back into that strong standing position, feeling your feet rooting to the earth, maybe hands at the heart. We can do one more circling of the arms, inhaling to circle, exhaling to draw back in. And from here, making your way to whatever form of sitting is comfortable for your body. So we've got all these lovely props. If you want to use them, you could sit onto a folded blanket or you could sit on the block. I find the bolster to be more comfortable than the block personally, or you could do the sitting in a chair. So whatever position of support feels good to you. And from here, you can bring your feet, the soles of the feet together and let your knees open as wide as they're comfortable opening. If this doesn't feel good and you're in a chair, you can just sit with your feet flat on the floor and just do some swaying. If you're on the ground and you don't like this position, you could just try cross leg and you can make something else up. And as you come into this position with the feet together, um, 
or with the, any other of the variations, legs crossed or just comfortable sitting, you could then explore what kind of movement would feel nice to you. So maybe a little swaying side to side. If you'd like, you could let that swaying come a little further forward and see what that brings to the body, what kind of sensation. Or another option would be to lean back, to take your hands kind of back behind you. And you could stay with this here, or another option would be to straighten the legs. I'm gonna scoot off the bolster onto the blanket because when I do this next one, I tend to slide all the way off the bolster if I do it on that high of a height. But taking the legs into like a nice wide V, and you can do this just sitting in a chair. You just scooch to the edge of the chair and take your legs as far into that V shape as is comfortable or from the floor. And then it's the same idea that we can just let this kind of rock from side to side and that rocking might be straight up and down, or maybe you come forward slightly. Or you could lean it back. So just sensing in your body where things feel like they want to move, where you want that sensation to be placed. And maybe this makes its way into a kind of an opening, lifting through the right arm, letting your body lean to the left. And you could look down, you could look up, you could circle through that top hand or through the feet if you want a little extra movement here. If you're in a chair, you can just take this as a kind of lean to one side. And if you'd like to explore the other side, you could bring the right arm down, left arm up and over. Again, there could be stillness, there can be movement. And then when you are ready, you could come now to any kind of comfortable sitting um, in the chair with the feet on the floor, or if you'd like cross-legged, or you can sit in a kneeling position if that's more comfortable. And we're just gonna explore a little bit of a twist for the body. But before we twist, if you'd like, you could just bring your hands to your heart and just feel this little sway happening through the mid back, that space kind of between the shoulder blades, just to see if we can't get a little bit more juiciness, a little more movement from that spot that tends to be really tight, kind of overworked. And you could just stay with this if you want, with this gentle swaying. Or if you'd like, you could let this take you into a gentle twist over to the right. And as you twist, maybe sensing, can you get some of that movement or some of that opening in through the mid back? Letting the arms be just super loosey goosey with this twist so that the power to twist is gonna come from our core, not from our arms pulling or yanking us. And especially if you're in your second or third trimester, you don't want a deep twist in the belly. So you really want that twist to live in the upper back but even if you're not pregnant, it's a nice place to twist from. Because with all, of the, uh, with all of the work of being a mom, there's a lot of lifting and there's a lot of forward movement and there's a lot of baby holding and feeding and all this stuff bringing us here. So anything that can kind of open in to that mid back space can just be really, really therapeutic for our bodies. And as you feel ready to explore the other side, if your legs are crossed, if you want, you can switch the cross of the legs. And then again, just kind of take it into that gentle twist over to the left and just sense like, can you bring that twist a little bit more into that mid to upper back area? Maybe the arms want to just stay loosey goosey. Maybe they want to reach a little bit more, but without any pull. And then if you'd like, you could unwind this twist and we can make our way all the way down onto the ground. And if when you lie on the floor, you want some support under your head, the blankets can be a really nice support, just placing it like a pillow at the top of the mat. 
And if you're comfortable without a blanket, feel free to just lie flat on the floor. And if you're pregnant and lying on your back does not feel good, um, staying seated would be the great option for these first ones. And then I'll have some options for you with um, some of the later ones. But sitting in a chair is probably best. From here, you can separate your feet as wide as they're comfortable separating. Usually the mat distance apart is plenty wide. You don't have to go any wider than that, but figuring out sort of where your feet are comfortable. And then we call these windshield wipers and they're just like they sound. So you're gonna exhale, let your knees drop down to one side, inhale back up and exhale to the other side. And so in sitting, you just let your knees sway side to side if you want, you could turn your head either in the same direction as the knees or the opposite. And again, this movement could be really small. Maybe it's just a couple inches that your knees are moving side to side. Or maybe you make it really big, letting the knees really drop down. You could stay with this as long as you're happy with it. If you'd like to try something else, you could cross your right ankle over your left knee and let that left knee drop open. And from here, maybe you wanna do a little swaying or a little rocking. And you could stay right here if this feels like the right place to be, or if you want to explore something else, you could reach through the gap, take hold of that left thigh, and you could just gently draw in and feel a little sway happening there, or stillness is fine too. Just noticing where you're feeling the sensation in the body, where there's stretch, Noticing what the breath is doing. And if you'd like, you could explore the other side, crossing ankle over knee. And again, you might hang out with the foot flat on the floor. Or you might reach through the gap. You might have stillness, you might have movement. Maybe noticing if the sensation is different on this side than it was on the other. It usually is. This is a notoriously asymmetrical stretch for the body. It usually feels pretty different from one side to the other, and that's okay. And I forgot to mention, in seated, you just cross your ankle over your knee. And you can lean forward a little or lean back as you do this. And then from here, we're gonna make our way into whatever version of sort of a final relaxation pose you wanna explore. And I'm gonna give you a couple of options. So one option would be a supported child's pose. And this, the bolster is really handy for. And some people like to prop the bolster up on a block. Usually the lowest height feels the best. And you bring it where your knees are on either side of the bolster and then you just lie forward and let your head turn to one side and let your body just rest. It feels quite nice. And again, you can play around with if you want the, the block in or not, how high you want it to be. Maybe turning your head partway through, you know, 10 breaths or so on one side, 10 on the other. Or another option would be to build yourself this little inclined plane and almost do the opposite to lie back. So for this version, you would scoot back until your sacrum is right up against the bolster. And the blanket, you could take it into a little rolled up blanket shape and bring that under your knees. If you need more support under your head, feel free to grab another blanket and place it under your head for a little pillow support. And then arms can rest at the sides. And you can let the palms be up or down if the palms are up, you're gonna get a little bit more of that stretch and opening through the front of the chest, but for some people that's too much, that just doesn't feel good. So palms down is fine too. If you've got enough um, equipment around, you could even take some extra bolsters, place them under your arms or some extra blankets and fold them under your arms for a little more support too. And then from here, eyes can be open or closed. 
or even half open, half closed, kind of that little slight gaze. And if your body needs movement in order to kind of stay in that happy space, you could circle through ankles, circle through wrists. And maybe just again, noticing what the breath is doing in the body. Just feeling the rhythm of the breath, that flow from inhale to exhale. And if you're in child's pose, maybe you feel the breath moving into your back. If you're in this, we call it a heart opener. In this reclining heart opener, maybe you feel your breath more in your belly. And if none of these options feel good for you, feel free to find your own space that you want to relax in. So that could just be lie on the floor. You don't need anything under you. It could be sit in a chair and just kind of lean back into the chair. That works too. Maybe noticing where your body is resisting letting go, where there's tension. And there's a couple of ways to release that tension from the body when you find it, when you feel it. Sometimes just bringing your awareness there, just noticing, oh yeah, like I'm holding some tension here in my shoulders. Just noticing it is the first step in letting it go. Sometimes that's enough. Just notice. Or another thing that you could do is you could think of your breath as a tool for re relaxation. So noticing where that tension is and then using your exhale to just melt. To think kind of let it all go liquid and gooey. And in line with that, you might start to notice that your exhales start to take a little bit longer. Maybe you linger on the exhale just a little bit. Slowing the breath down and particularly slowing down the exhale is a really powerful way of slowing down our nervous system, of taking us out of that fight or flight, out of that stress response. The two most powerful things that you can do with the breath to get your body out of that fight or flight response are one, to slow it down, particularly the exhale, slow down the exhale, and two, let the breath drop lower in the body, trying to get that breath more in the belly, lower back, lower ribs. And feel free to stay here in whatever position you're happy in for as long as you want. But if you are ready to start to transition out, you could just come back to whatever kind of organic stretching or moving feels good. As you feel ready, you could just gently roll to one side, maybe resting on your side for a breath or two. and eventually making your way back up to seated. And again, you could think of this as just movement for the sake of movement, or if you'd like, this next piece of movement could be an offering of compassion and gratitude to the world we live in, to the people in this program, and to ourselves. So if you'd like, you could bring your hands together at your heart, and we can inhale and think of sending that outward and as we exhale, drawing it inward. Thank you all so much for practicing with me today. I hope this video worked out. I hope to see you in flesh in the real life very soon. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but hopefully this is the next best thing. And if you have any kind of um, feedback or any um, questions, you can relay them to Mackenzie and she can get them to me. But thank you. Have a great rest of your day.